Hi, this is Pastor Steve of North Hollywood First United Methodist Church. This is a church where everyone is welcome and where all means all. And I greet you on this Mother's Day, that day when we celebrate those special women in our lives that have cared for us, that have shaped us, that have raised us, and have endured the little quirks of character that we bring into their lives. I hope that you will join in with our worship with your heart, with your mind, and with your voice as we open our worship service with hymn number 261, Lord of the Dance. I danced in the morning when the world was begun. I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun. And I came down from heaven and I danced on high at Bethlehem. I had my birth. Dance, dance wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance. And I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance and he. I dance for the scribe and the Pharisee, but they would not dance, and they would not follow me. I dance for the fishermen, for James and John, they came to me, and the of uncertainty, you are the ground that steadies us. When nothing feels stable or secure, the knowledge of your abiding presence is our strength and our comfort. Remind us, O oh God, that we need not look far for you, as close as our breath, our neighbor, and every creaturely thing you reach for us. Thanks be to you, Lord. Amen. And if you now please take a look at your screens, we will join together in the call to worship. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge.
Turn your ear to me, come quickly to my rescue. Since you are my rock and my fortress, let your face shine upon your servant. Hey kids, I have a question for you. Have you hugged your mom yet today? Well, if you haven't, be sure that you do. And in fact, do it as much as you can today because we're celebrating them. It's a very special day. What is it? That's right, it's Mother's Day. Did you know that in the Bible, it talks a lot about moms? Moms who love God and teach their children to love God hold a really special place in God's heart. In fact, God makes a promise to children who honor their father and their mother. It says in Exodus chapter 20, verse 12, honor thy father and thy mother. It says that if we do this, we will live a long and full life in the land that God has given us. Isn't that great? Well, I was thinking about ways that we can honor our moms all the time, not just today, but every day. So we're gonna do a little true and false quiz. Are you ready? Okay, so anytime I shout out something or say something that is true, this is the way to honor our mom. You're gonna say true and put your thumb up. And if I say something and you think it's false, you're gonna say false and put your thumb down. Okay, are you ready? All right, here we go. Ways to honor our moms. True or false? Doing what mom says right away. True or false? True. Throwing a fit if you don't get what you want. False. Cleaning your room. True. Complaining when your mom prepares food for you. False. Telling other people your mom's not nice. Definitely false. Praying for your mom. True. Telling your mom I love you. Absolutely true. So how did you do? I bet you all got an A plus, 100% on that quiz. I'm sure of it. Well, many of you watching this video have been coming to our church for a really long time. And that's because of the strong faith of your moms. They want you to learn this love of God, this full faith in God. And they want other people to see that love and faith in God shining through you. It's a pretty wonderful thing that your mom has given you, don't you think? Well, today we give thanks for our moms. We give thanks for the faith that grows in our hearts because of watching our faithful, loving, godly moms. So happy Mother's Day to the moms here on earth and to those that are in heaven. We love you so much. Have a great day, and I love you all. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. We've come to the time in our service of prayer. Would you join me in prayer? Creator God, maker of heaven and earth, we are humbled by your presence among us today. You are the author of life, the architect of all things, seen and unseen and you are here with us now in our homes on this beautiful mother's day let this time of worship and celebration draw us deeper into relationship with you and one another renew our faith revive our joy and restore our commitment to living according to the ways of christ wherever we have failed wherever we have spoken unkindly 
Wherever we have forgotten to embody the gospel of Christ, forgive us, we pray. We trust that you care about our joys and sorrows. We know that you rejoice with us in times of celebration and weep with us in times of suffering. Hear our prayers this morning, our thanksgiving and our intercessions. We pray especially for the sick, the hungry, the lonely, and the fearful. We pray for those who are struggling with abuse, addiction, debt, and the long recovery that is the midst of and following global pandemics. We know that you dwell with each of your beloved children. Give comfort, healing, guidance, and hope to all in need. God of life, we pray also for the nations. Our hearts are troubled by the constant violence and injustice in the world. Cover the lands you created with the spirit of peace. Grant wisdom and compassion to all leaders and shine your perfect light in lands that are darkened by war. Gracious God, we love you. Give us strength to follow you and the courage to share your transforming love with all people. In the name of your son, Jesus, the word made flesh, we pray. Amen. Join me now in saying the prayer Jesus taught his followers to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Today's scripture reading is from the first letter of Peter, chapter 2, verses 19 through 25. For it is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. On August 8th of 1914, Sir Ernest Shackleton and 28 men climbed aboard a ship and set sail on a great adventure. And the adventure that they had designed for themselves was to be the first team to cross the Antarctic continent. Unfortunately, their ship, the Endurance, became frozen in ice on the Weddell Sea on January 19th of 2015. And for 10 months, the ship and its crew of 28 drifted with the ice until the ship was finally crushed by the shifting ice flows. And the men had to take all of their provisions and equipment out of the ship and establish a camp on the ice. And for the next five months, they lived in this camp as they drifted northward into warmer waters. And during that five month drift, the ice that they were on slowly began to shrink until it was no bigger than the size of a football field. It's at this point that Shackleton and the men knew they couldn't stay. So they got into three lifeboats and they escaped, eventually finding land on Elephant Island and then from there, Shackleton and, and three other men sailed 800 miles, braving seas that sailors considered to be the most savage in the world. 
and they landed on the island of South Georgia. Then they crossed mountains and glacier fields on foot until they found a whaling station. Final rescue for the entire crew occurred on August 30th of 1916. Now I want you to consider those dates. It began on August 8th of 1914. They were rescued on August 30th of 1916. That's two years, two years of being, of surviving out in the wilderness, out in really terrible climate. It's an adventure and it's a story of endurance. Now leadership experts love the story because at the end of, of this adventure, the boss hadn't lost a single man. Shackleton came home with all 28 of his crewmen. And as I said, it's a story of endurance, but I'm gonna go out on a limb and I'm gonna think that none of us would want to experience what Shackleton and his men did. We don't want to because endurance, simply stated, is the same as a person's capacity to suffer. You see, no matter what you're doing, the moment that you are tempted to quit because something has become unpleasant, because it has become difficult, because you are tired, uh, because it's painful, that is when you are enduring. You begin to suffer, and if you keep doing it, it means that you are continuing to push through in the midst of suffering. Now, the author of this first letter to the churches in Asia, 1 Peter, the author knows that the people are suffering. He knows that they are being uh, harassed, they're being shunned, they're being kicked out of synagogues and families, they're being persecuted, they're being imprisoned. Some of them are even being put to death. And so the author names their, their suffering. And he encourages them to endure because they suffer for doing right. And he ties their suffering to Christ. Hear these words. This is 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 19 through 23. For it is a credit to you if being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you are doing right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. It's pretty ingenious, actually. The author ties their suffering for the gospel to Christ's suffering for them and says that it's their ability to endure their suffering for doing right, which earns God's approval. Now, that probably doesn't seem right to us, as we've come to understand that our approval from God comes from grace through faith, and it's nothing that we can earn. And really, I, this is true in theory, but faith the life of faith is not a passive thing. It's intentional and it's active. And we live out our faith in Christ, even when it is difficult to do so. In fact, the author says that we are called to suffer. We are called to continue to do the right thing, even when it is costly and difficult, just like Christ did. Literally, the author says that we are called to follow in Christ's footsteps. He doesn't promise that being a Christian is going to make all your dreams come true, that it's going to make your life early, easy, and it doesn't mean that all your problems are going to disappear. It's going to be tough. There's going to be resistance. 
And we're called to endure in the face of that resistance, in the face of the misunderstandings that come. The author then moves on to give some practical steps on on what that endurance might look like. And this is verse 23. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten. But he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. And I think, especially in what we are in the midst of right now, that we need to pause for a moment and consider what the author of the letter is actually telling these early Christians. And the first thing that we hear is that when you are feeling abused for doing the right thing, when you feel that you are being mistreated for doing the right thing, do not return the abuse. Retaliation is something that's instinctual. Retaliation is something that we are told over and over that we are entitled to do. But it is not the Christian way. And that simple guideline should shape and direct the way that we interact with people in our lives. And it should shape and direct the way that we respond to people in our social media feeds. And the second thing is that when you are suffering for doing the right thing, do not threaten. Do not threaten vengeance or payback. Do not intimidate the other person. As the author points out, Jesus didn't do it. And the implication is that neither should we. What someone does say about us or do to us should never shape the response of our lives. Jesus is the one who shapes our response. And we do our best to respond the way that Jesus would have us respond. And the third thing is, when you find yourself suffering for doing the right thing, don't focus on the one who is bringing the abuse to you. Instead, focus on the one who has called us. The one who has called us to act with justice and with mercy and with faithful humility. Focus on Christ. Focus on God. And that will help shape the way we are able to endure, even when it is difficult. Now this week, Governor Newsom introduced some plans about how he hopes to reopen the state for business and for life. We happen to be in phase three, but you'll notice that none of these phases come with timelines. And it may be months before we get to phase three and we are able to gather again here in the sanctuary and worship together. At the same time, opinions and emotions are running hot about the coronavirus and about uh, the tension between public safety, constitutional freedom, and the economy. And so here's what I'm going to say today. We can endure the hardships that we are in the middle of in a manner which honors Christ by letting our lives be shaped by Christ's example. I'm going to repeat that. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, you can endure the hardships that we are in the midst of in a manner that honors Christ by letting our lives be shaped by Christ's example. So we will keep each other safe. We will be generous with one another. We will not be abusive in the way we interact with people, even if they are abusive towards us. The urge is to quit. The urge is to stop wearing your mask. The urge is to once again get rid of the social distancing because we, we want to be close. We want to be seen. But let's listen to our leaders. And let's keep following the guidelines. Now, I do want to point out one thing before I close today. 
Nowhere does the author indicate that we should seek out abuse. Nor do they say that we should remain in abusive relationships or situations. If you can escape, go. Leave. God doesn't want you to remain in a dangerous situation. It's one thing to be abused for doing the right thing. It's another thing to be abused because of someone else's mental state or emotional breakdown. You know, in 75 AD when this letter was written, Christianity was illegal. But by the time we get to 318 AD, Christianity is suddenly made legal in the Roman Empire. Because early Christians endured. They kept at their faith. And because they kept at their faith, it became a better world. For them and for the people of the Roman Empire. So my friends, we can endure. We can endure faithfully. And if we allow ourselves to be shaped and inspired by Christ during this time so that we can do this in a good way, a better world awaits us. Endure as Christ endured. And together, let's make a better world. Amen. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your perfect love is casting out fear. Even when I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life, I won't turn back, I know you are here, and I will fear no evil. Oh, my God is with me, and if my God is with me, whom then shall I fear, whom then shall I fear? Oh, no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm, oh, no, you never let go in every high and every low. Never let go, Lord, you never let go of me. And I can see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on, a glorious light beyond all compare. And there will be an end to these troubles, but until that day comes, we'll live to know you're here on. And I will fear no evil, for my God is with me. And if my God is with me, whom then shall I fear? Whom then shall I fear? Oh no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm. Oh no, you never let go in every high and every low. Oh no, you never let go. Lord, you never let go of me. As I can see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on. And there will be an end to these troubles. But until that day comes, Still I will praise you, still I will praise you. Oh no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm. Oh no, you never let go every high and every low. Oh no, you never let go, Lord, you never let go of me. Oh no, you 
never let go through the calm and through the storm oh no you never let go in every high and every low oh no you never let go lord you never let go of me we've come to a time of announcements but we would first like to give you an invitation to the offering. You may give to the church one of two ways. The first is text to tithe. Just text the amount you'd like to give to the number on your screens. It's a one-time setup and is fast and simple. You may also send in your tithes and offerings to the church office at 4832 Tahunga Avenue in North Hollywood, California, 91601. Thank you so much for your continued giving. Following worship, you're all invited to a time of virtual fellowship on Zoom at 11.30 a.m. The meeting ID is on your screens. Please pop in and say hello. Every Thursday at 7 p.m., Pastor Steve will be leading a prayer call check-in on Zoom. Meeting ID is on your screens. He will also take time to discuss his previous sermon and answer any questions of faith. He calls it Second Helpings. Please join us. Ways to volunteer. The North Hollywood Interfaith Food Pantry contact information is on your screens. Please contact Barbara Javits to volunteer in person. The pantry needs non-perishable food items, hygiene items like shampoo, soap, lotion, deodorant, feminine hygiene items, diapers for babies and adults, fruit from your trees. All these items may be dropped off at First Christian Church on Colfax and Moore Park during distribution days, which are Monday and Friday, 7.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. Volunteers are on hand to unload your car. If you'd like volunteers to stop by your home to do a pickup, please let the church office know and we can send someone to your house to do a contactless pickup. If you are in need of prayer or any assistance, please contact us at nohofumc at gmail.com and we will be able to get you connected to Pastor Steve as well. With these things in our hearts and minds, let us conclude this morning's worship service by singing our closing hymn. I will come to you in the silence I will lift you from all your fear. You will hear my voice. I claim you as my choice. Be still and know I am here. I am hope for all who are hopeless. I am eyes for all who long to see. In the shadows of the night, I will be your light, come and rest in me. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me, I will bring you home. I love you and you. Be 
afraid I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me. I will bring you home. I love you and you are It's been great joining with you in worship today, and we hope that as we go forth from here, that you would go knowing that Christ goes before you, that Christ stands behind you, that Christ is above you and below you, to your right and to your left. And most of all, that Christ would be in your heart, so that you might endure all that life throws at you in a way that brings glory to Christ. Now go in peace. And don't forget to celebrate your mom.